So considering the individual, Paul, welcome. Um, and I'll come to you. So what is create the attack? And what are the key skills players need in this area of the pitch? And what are some of the common faults that you see with players around the academy system? Um, well, basically, the, the FA is calling it create the attack, the middle third of the pitch. So it's how do we um, how do we attack? How do we search for gaps within the opposition? They'll probably have a compact defence. So it might be that we go round them, over them or through them. Um, and in that sense, they'll be the key skills that the individuals um, will be needing. So if, if they're directly against a, a, their opponent, how do they dodge? How do they create a yard, a space to create a passing line to go forward? Um, how do they um, manoeuvre if they can't go forward? How do they turn and maybe change the, the point of attack? So they'll have dragging and dodging skills to get a, a yard, um, maybe fainting to get a little space to play forward. And if, the, if that's blocked, they might need turning skills to, to change the play to go out the other way. And in all of that, you'll want really smooth techniques because if you're then passing on, we're going to go to connecting players in a bit. But if you're playing a pass, you want it to give the, the player you're passing to the best possible opportunity to then, then go forward themselves um, you know, within the game. Um, Stuart, any any other points there? No, I think you, I think you've really covered it there, Paul. And I think as we start to go through the um, the discussions, everything will start to fit nicely in place. But I think you know how we just mentioned about it being a focus in the middle area of the pitch and us being possession is a key thing. And we'll start to really um, go in a lot more detail as we start to progress through. That's great. Cheers, cheers, Paul. Cheers, Stu. Stu, a question for you then. So, what might this look like through the different phases of play development? Yeah, I think it's a really important question, Futch, that, um, you know, certainly, you know, if we're going to really produce players who can really cope at the, uh, the highest level and really cope with the demands of the game, that we don't try and miss out stages of development. So uh, certainly the younger ones, and I probably argue certainly up to 13, 14, it's really that kind of focus on developing the technique before you start really mainly focus on the tactical side of the game. So you think about the foundation players, certainly the youngest end, uh, that relationship with the ball is 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 so important. Uh, you know, certainly the ball by themselves as well, recognising different ways of being able to play forward. So if you look at about the game being the game, we're looking to try and play in a forwards direction to penetrate the opposition at some point. So even at foundation phase on a on a on a singular basis, how can they manipulate the ball? How can they mask the ball? And how can they recognise to maybe work off both feet, work off both sides to twist and turn but ultimately try and go in a forward direction that's that's so important then as we start progressing through the pathway we start to develop these kind of relationships so it might not just be me with my ball now it might be me and my mate so now it's like staying on the ball for the right length of time so you know we, we want to encourage dribblers we want to encourage players who are able to excite us with the ball but then it's recognising then that we might need um, one of our mates to try and play the ball too so it's it's that enticing the opposition, staying on the ball for a long enough period of time where I can use him as a decoy to try and take him on or or start to think about how to share the ball um, to the younger stage groups. And as we start to go through the pathway, it's just um, adding on to them complexities and adding the numbers and adding on these kind of decision-making kind of um, processes. But it's ultimately making sure technically able players will then be able to execute the tactical plan further down. So it's really important we don't, don't, don't miss stages of development and don't try and move to tactical uh, elements of the game too quickly. We've got to really get the technique sorted. That's really important, I think, Stuart Paul, that, isn't it? That you don't miss stages and we don't jump. I think, you know, the individual development, when we're talking, Paul's talking about some of the skills that are, are key and create the attack. If you start missing some of the layers out and start jumping into teamwork too soon and the players haven't got the capabilities to, to hit the passes, to receive the ball, Paul, then it all kind of starts falling down anyway, doesn't it? Yeah, I think what you've put sort of common faults, I think sometimes it's it's not so much cults, uh, faults, it's what, what are they capable of and are we advancing them too quickly in, in more complex games before they're ready for it? So have they got enough practice in individual skills in, as I say, receiving it, dodging, turning away from pressure, and but all the time with their head up. So if you're saying a common fault is... Um, players' capabilities when they first start off, they, they have to look at the ball, the constraint on the ball, but pretty soon we need them to be able to get their head up so that they're able to play ahead of the game. 
so that they can dodge and see a pass. Um, and then there'll be next stages. If they're receiving the ball, the person receiving the ball may receive it, then stop, then think what I'm going to do. So the next stage is can they look before the ball comes? They've already got a picture before it's coming. So that's getting your body orientated um, to look forward and play forward. And in that sense, it's very, very important that we have the idea here that the key intention is penetration. We want to go forward towards the goal. Now, if you have that as the intention within your practices, then the players are going to be guided to just organise their body in such a way that they can see forward before the ball comes. That's really important as they go as they go up. And in that sense, the next thing, they, the capability is, can they get their first touch to the best place? But if you've not had a look before the ball comes, you don't know what the best place is. You have to have a touch. Then you're having another touch because you're you're looking and that slows everything down. And by that stage, the, the gap may have gone. The, the defence may have got back into space. Um, and so these little capabilities, as they cut, as they happen, are really important. And in that sense, again, I hear quite a lot now, and I understand people think, well, we we're playing it around fast. We're gonna dis we're gonna get around the opposition. But if you play the ball too fast, or it's bobbly because you're trying to play too fast, it means that the guy haven't taken the ball, hasn't got time to look as it's on its way. He has to take a touch. He's got no other choice because it's coming fast. And then he'll play. Whereas if you take a little bit of a pace off it, like you'll see the top teams like Barcelona, like Man City, like Chelsea winning the European Cup, you know, they'll play the ball around in the build up, in the, in the searching for the pass at a weight whereby the player receiving it has got more options. So it's, he's receiving it, it means he can look, he can get the, his first touch to the right place, or he can play it first time, or it's coming at such a weight that he can disguise before it comes and maybe let the ball run. So there's more options if you get the right weight of pass. So it's not always fast. Sometimes it will be fast around the outside or punch through a gap. Um, but playing it just the right weight, I think that's a common fault. We play it too fast uh, quite often. Yeah. I think, Paul, as well, when you look at some of the top England players at the minute, your Grealishes and your Fodens, I think they're the masters of change of speed, whether that's pass, dribbling, when to when to up the tempo, when to slow it down. And I think that yeah. is almost a skill in itself of that decision-making. Of- Massive, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've- yeah. I think so. I, I, I think that, sorry, um, Butch, crossing over you. Yeah, but, um, yeah you've, you've led me into a little topic that I'm really sort of passionate about in the sense of, you know, we, we play as well, we get it and we give it high tempo, get it, give it, get it, give it. But if we always do that, and that's not to say it's not right, and most of the time it will be, but we never actually let the opponents come close to us. So we never entice them to us. Now, if we entice them to us closely, and Grealish is one of the best, but Mount, those sort of players, they entice you to them close. Great saying for this is get close to the fire without getting burned. Michael Carrick was saying that. Let players come come close, get close to the fire without getting burned. You suck them in, and then you can play around them. And one of the ways of getting through then is combinations or, or the right weight of pass at the right time. So delaying your pass and sucking people on to entice them close to you and using their flow to go opposite to them and play and run past them is, a, is, is an important combination. One, twos, third man runs, yeah. Okay. You got any thoughts on it, Stu? Yeah, no, 100% uh, echo what Paul's saying there. And I think when you think about the theme around considering the individual, you know, we've got to really think about what the individual, who who that person may be. And you know what kind of what kind of strengths they have, and what kind of development areas do we need to try and support them with? And you know, throughout the kind of practices, what we try and give them uh, exposure to, um, you know, start providing different problems. And that might just be in a simple way that we 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 just match them up with different personnel. So we've got maybe a quick one against them, or a slow one, or a really jinky one, or whatever it might be. Just to get them to think about how to bring to life all the things what Paul has been talking about. In, in in certain situations in different experiences. Brilliant. Just back to you then, Paul. Well, we've got obviously plenty of coaches on the uh, on the webinar now with some great stuff in the chat box. So how can coaches develop these skills for players within practice design? Have you got any kind of examples? Well, the first thing is to draw their attention to it. You know, um, we have to draw their attention to the top players and then draw their attention to um, changes of speed and... Um, and how to bring it about. So you you might quite often, you might go down one side of the pitch 
but we can't get through there. So we want to change it to the other side. And a lot of that will be control pass, control pass, control pass, that sort of rhythm. But if you go control pass, control pass, control pass, control pause pass, well, that might be enough to, to beat them with a change of rhythm. Someone else comes closer now, and now you play that pass, pass through them. So you've slightly upset the rhythm of the defense, and you pass and pause, pass and run, you might beat them in a combination then. So changes of rhythm, or it might be control pass, control pass, then pass, pass, pass. So changes to first time passes. And um, yeah, that, that's what you want to encourage in your, in your, t in your players, say, well, we, we're going to change the speed. So let's control the speed and then see if we can speed it up. That's why going fast all the time, it, it leaves less options. Yeah, and I think it's really important in create the attack because when you've got you're trying to encourage players to get on the ball and try things, you've got to give them that freedom, but they're going to make mistakes. So for me, I think one of the key things with younger players is you've got to try and praise the intention of what they're doing, not always the outcome, because they are going to get it wrong. I think when you design your practices, you've got to almost understand before you start that it's not always going to look great and it's not always going to go right, because if you want them to try things and test themselves and try and improve, well, they are going to get it wrong at times. So I think that's a really important point from me. Yeah, uh, in there, yeah, yeah. Matt, I think it's a massive point that foot. You know, trying to give players a belief that it's yeah. the right thing to try and do. Because if we are talking, certainly around the younger end um, of development, we're trying to get these players in one v ones. Ultimately, they are going to fail quite a few times, but they've got to try and figure it out, haven't they? So if we are trying to look to play forwards, then they've got to try and make other mistakes for for opportunities to try and recognise what they're going to do next time and you know we want intelligent players we want players who can make decisions in the hardest moments of the game so we've got to introduce them to this at an early age and you know like you say provide the right support as coaches but like Paul's also saying know what it is you're actually looking for to try and help the players to get better at yeah I think that it's vital that atmosphere that you create as a coach um, what you've got to remember, if they're, if they're learning new skills, if, they, if you're asking them to go closer to the players uh, or, or draw them on closer to you before, the, before you, you commit them, or if you go ask them to run at a player but get that little bit closer before you play it to, co to really commit him and kill him off, Grealish is the best example. He goes so close to them. So if you're asking them to do that, you're asking them to do something new. So it's, a la it's like a lab. You know, they're, they're, they're in it's the scientific research is you've got an idea, let's try it out. If it doesn't go quite right, you get too far away. Oh, that was too far away. Next time I go closer, I go closer, I got tackled. You can't, you can't have a go at them. Yeah. You know, they're experimenting. You just got to give them the feedback. Maybe it's, oh, try and get a little bit closer. Try and use the front of your foot. Or maybe you scoop the ball over their foot instead of trying to play it on the floor. Um, so you, you've got to give them a an atmosphere that experiment experimentation is good, you know, in training and in games, depending on the level it's at, you know? Yeah. I think you both write some great stuff and there's some, there's some things coming off the chat box where people are talking about receiving skills to move the ball, uh, move movement skills, communication, arrogance on the ball, stay on the ball, um, scanning and all these things are key. And it's great that they're on the chat box. But again, now with the individual, this is the time at this state, age and stage where we need to really be homing these skills before they move into the kind of bigger format. So some, some great stuff. We're going to move on.